I really wanted to do these floating candles last year, but there were a few problems. One, everything that was out on the market was battery operated, and I knew that I was gonna to want to hang these up for the whole month of October, and I didn't wanna be changing batteries all month long. Two, I wanted these to be able to go outside. It was gonna be exposed to the rain. Then, when I checked a couple weeks ago, I finally saw the light bulbs that would make these candles work. I've posted a link in the description below. They come in strands of 10 feet long, so they've got 10 light bulbs each strand. It seemed to solve half of my problems. One, they would be powered by electricity, and so I wouldn't need to worry about changing out batteries. Two, because they're powered by electricity, I knew that I could keep them up all month long. Three, by 3D printing the candles, I could make sure that they look realistic. Four, I'd be able to keep these candles year after year with little to no maintenance. We're here in our entryway. At the request of the Ministry of Magic, this is where we're going to start doing our Harry Potter hanging lights. Turn to page 394. First off, I'm going to cut a board that's roughly 44 inches. I'm going to hang the board about a foot down from my ceiling, and I'm going to have hooks in it, and that's how I'm going to have all my lights going out. Make sure to stay tuned until the end of my video to see what I'm going to do next with this guy for our Harry Potter themed Halloween. attach these ceiling hooks to my 2x4. The way to tell how big of a drill bit to use is to put it in front of your piece and if you can just barely see the threads on either side of your drill bit, chose the right size drill bit. If it gets too hard to turn, you can use a screwdriver to give better leverage. We've got our board here, so now we're going to attach it to the wall. I pre-attached two screws here so that'd be easier for me. And I'm not being super precise here. We're gonna measure down nine inches and make sure that I'm somewhat centered here. Nine inches on each side. Nine inches on the top. Put my level on here. Pretty good. We've got our first board up. Now we're gonna attach one more board behind us and that'll act as two points for the floating lights to hang from. This board, I'm actually gonna hug closer to the ceiling because I don't want people to see it coming in to our entryway. Just gonna snug up this one side. I've attached a hook right here so that from below, it kinda looks hidden and it's at an angle so that when my string goes this way, it will have some good force. From my hook over, I'm about 18 inches. And what I'm doing is tying a knot because I don't want the ends of these ropes to be moving around. Next, I searched online to see if I could find a 3D model. I found a few options, but I was really concerned that they just weren't gonna work. So I made a few prototypes. I am familiar with Google SketchUp, but I'm not really familiar with how to take a model and manipulate it. So luckily I found one candle that matched everything and all I had to do was scale it to size. This one I found and I scaled it to 1.25 inches. Finally, all of the candles are done. That took for ages. Each candle took a little more than two hours to print, times 40 candles, that's over 80 hours of printing. Spooky how the time flies when one's having fun. <laughs> I wanted to walk you through the evolutionary process of all these. The first candle that I found is this Harry Potter candle. It actually says Harry Potter at the bottom. I wanted to try this one because it's hollow. Maybe the lights would fit okay. Then I found this one. I like the drips of the wax much better. Again though, it had a hole. Next, we had to decide what color filament we were gonna do. I ordered a different color filament. It looks like legit candles. Then I found this candle. It looks just as good as the other one, but better. When you cut into it, it's full. That would alleviate my concerns about the rain. I figured I could just put in hot glue. I drilled some slots in there so that I could fit the candle wick in there. So this is what the final will look like. Brilliant. I drilled down so that the cord is down further and it puts the candle light closer to the top of the candle. Turned out pretty sweet. Originally I was using my razor blade to kind of make it cut and then I would break it. I think I found an easier way. 
if I just use my pliers. This seems to work much faster. A couple things I wanted to show you here. It's a metal vise. I've added two pieces of quarter inch MDF because it won't be metal on plastic. It'll be MDF on plastic and the MDF is a little bit more forgiving. And also this allows a little bit to clear the wax drips. This hole saw has a pretty wide tip here. Makes it difficult for this to sit centered in the candle. I'm gonna drop the very center of the candle to kind of give myself a pilot hole so that when I put this bit in there, it will sit in that spot and not wanna move over to the outside. The light itself is an inch and a 16th long. We're gonna go three quarters of an inch. My inch mark is the same as that. I'm gonna mark three quarters of an inch. That way I know how deep to go. When I use these pliers, I really feel like a dentist. Like I should be pulling out somebody's molars. Blah. I'm not worried too much about cleaning up this edge because I'll clean that up later. This is Gorilla Glue, hot glue sticks. It has a 45 second working time and it's indoor and outdoor weather resistant. This board really helped me. I made it the size of one candle and it allowed me to be able to glue them all in place and not have to worry about breaking the bulbs. Thank you so much for checking out this video about how I made the Harry Potter floating candles. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video and you're interested in seeing more Harry Potter Halloween decorations that I'm gonna build, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you are notified when my new videos post. They are gonna be so cool. My next video will feature this guy, this, and this, and this, and many more cool things. Ugh, you're not gonna be doing sewing projects, are you? I thought this was a building channel. Maybe I like working with fabric. Hmm. Expecto Patrona!